Hello and welcome to another video. In the last video we dug out the footings for this retaining wall and today we're going to get the steel reinforcement in place and get ready to pour the concrete foundation. I'm going to start by just loosely laying out the block work just so that I can determine where the curve of the wall is going to be and that means I can simply mark where the vertical steel reinforcement bars are going to be without any measuring required. Now when I'm loosely laying out the blocks like this, just to get a feel for the curvature, what I'm not concerned with at the moment is how uh, aligned these perpendicular joints are. This one right here will actually be half a block when we come to actually put the block work in place. And so all I'm doing is just putting full blocks in place just to get the curvature, nothing more. Now the purpose of this block work is to give the retaining wall its strength. I don't mind that it's particularly angular or faceted, but what I do want to make sure is that when my brickwork goes against it as a decorative skin, it gives me the smooth radius and bend that I'm looking for. So I'm just going to loosely lay these half ends out just to try and see what the radius might be given the way I've laid out the block work right here. Now I'm not sure if you can see from there, but that curve, well it isn't very curvy. It's great at the beginning and it's very straight in the centre and then it sort of doesn't really know what it's doing towards the end here. And so I think the better thing to do is remove these blocks from here, now it's roughed out, and get those front bricks exactly where I want them to be. So what I'm doing here, not only am I looking at the curve of the brickwork, I'm also bearing in mind and paying attention to this join in the centre here. Um, I'm going to butt them up against each other so they're touching at the back and open at the front. And when it comes to mortaring these in place, I will just take a slip off the side of these bricks. That way it'll bring it all level. Now, after a little bit of time fussing around with this curve, I'm pretty happy with this. Now, it's not going to be perfect. These are just loosely laid on very uneven ground. And so they're just about giving me a guide as to where the block work will need to be. Now, the reason I need to know this is I'm about to put the steel work in place and the vertical steel supports need to be uh, inside each of these blocks. So I'm just going to take the upside down marker spray paint and just put an indication mark just in the center of each of these blocks. Now, this will give me a guide and I take the blocks out of the way as to where those verticals need to be. Now, I've marked every center of every block. Not that I'll be putting that many vertical supports in. There'll be one every 400 millimeters, 16 inches. So that means I'll be missing every other hole. But if I've got every hole marked, it means I've got some choices as to where I start and finish my support work. Now, as anticipated, now that I've got the layout complete, a little bit of trimming just on these three steps here, then we're ready to get some steel reinforcement bent and put into place. Time to test out our rebar bender that we made. Now, I know we tested it in the workshop after we'd made it, but we were using a piece of half inch, 12 millimeter diameter, solid round bar, mild steel. Now the rebar that we're using is also mild steel, but it's high tensile. Now in this country, the rebar is designed for seismic activity. And so it comes with a tensile strength and it's denoted on the material by a number. Now you can see here, imprinted onto the side of the material, this is a deformed steel rod. It's got these serrations on the outside for grip, but you can see right here, 500E. Now that designates this as the highest tensile strength rebar available. And this is going to help our wall be really, really strong. But does the rebar bend it? Let's find out. Put a mark at where I want the bend to begin. Put the mark at the tangent point on the roller. Give it a pull. Let's see if we can get a 90 degree bend. Oh, easy. So you can see it does a really nice tight 180 degree bend. I'm just going to chop it here um, and then bend the other end of this rod for one of my horizontal braces. So when it comes to marking out where to place the bends on the rebar, I've decided to use a permanent marker. And I've got this set of four here. Here's the blue, black, green and red. And you can see I've done a quick test on the steel to see which one is most obvious and which one stands out in the bright sunlight. And I think you'll agree with me that this one right here this blue one is the one to go for. 
Yes, I, I know, I, I know. It, it looks red, but trust me, this is the blue marker pen. Check this out. There's the blue marker pen. There's the blue tip. And if I just make a little mark here on the steel in blue, you can see within a couple of seconds, it actually starts to go red. Check that out. How crazy is that? That's some weird kind of alchemy. Clearly the pigment is soaking into the steel and leaving behind the red. There we have it, a set of bulk cutters just to trim it off here and then make about 23 more of these. You could argue that using an angle grinder would be a lot easier, <laughs> and it would be, but it would also be noisier and more dangerous. And so we're going to use the bulk cutters. It might be easier to make these as multiple pieces and then join them together, but why not have the challenge of trying to create it in one long piece? Uh, now it actually worked really, really well and surely is going to increase the strength of the wall having less joins. So to tie all the steel work together, I'm using this 300 millimeter long, 12 inches, galvanized wire. And to twist the wire, I'm using this tool. Now this is an invaluable tool. It's designed for this purpose. And you'll see as I use it, all I have to do is pull on this handle and it will rotate the hook, spinning the wire, tying the two pieces of rebar tightly together. It's important to pull the steels forwards to make sure we've got the adequate clearance here. Remember this steel work has to be in the center of, or at least 75 millimeters within the foundation. Right, so now my ladder rail is uh, lined up properly. I'm just going to bend this wire in half, wrap it around both pieces of rebar, bring the two loops together, just twist these a handful of times uh, anti-clockwise. Really important it's anti-clockwise, otherwise using the hook tool will just, um, well, it'll untwist it. Okay, so there we go. We've got ourselves a nice loop there. You can position the hook in here, hold the pieces of steel tightly, and just pull. And if I pull slowly, you can see how it operates. And I'm just going to keep doing this until the wires are tightly bound together. Eventually, it pulls off like so. And there we go. Now they're not super tight, but they're tight enough not to slide. The serrations in this deformed bar will stop the ladder moving around. That maintains my position for my vertical steel. I would caution you really must check the code in your area. I'm fortunate enough to live here in New Zealand where, due to the temperate climate, there's no frost line to consider. If you're undertaking a project, make sure to check how deep the frost line is in your area and then know how deep you need to dig. Right, just putting a small radius in the steel so we can get around the curved foundations at the front edge of the wall here. It's important not to overbend the steel. Keep testing it to see if it's the right radius if you overbend it, you can't just straighten it out. Uh, that additional work hardening can cause the steel to fatigue or at least be weaker than it should be. In fact, if you overbend a piece of steel, the recommendation is that you actually heat it up in order to straighten it out. Now we don't have heating equipment here, and so I'm gonna make sure that I get this to the correct radius first time. All right, needs to be a bit tighter. That's good, okay. Chop that off. Right there. It's 
So wherever you've got two pieces of steel overlapping each other to effectively extend the length of that piece of rebar, it's important that the overlap distance is to code. Now here we've got 150 millimeters of minimum overlap. I'm gonna go for about 10 to 11 inches here, so about 250 millimeters or so. Um, that way I can get two ties on here and it'll be really, really strong connection point. You can see why it was so important to mark the center of each block on the curve. That way I could get these ladder braces in place, these tie bars, which gave me the location for these vertical steels. Very important that they actually protrude through the center of the blocks. Now it's worth taking a few moments just to talk about the bending of the steel reinforcement bar. It's really important that this radius is the correct radius. It's going to be set by your local building code and in this area you need to have a minimum radius here of 30 millimeters, which is what? About uh, an inch and a quarter. Now that's a minimum. It can be larger, it can't be less. And the reason being that if we had a tight radius here, we'd be work hardening the steel at this point. And that way it would perform differently to the steel here and here. We need to have some kind of uniformity in terms of its overall strength. Well, the next step now that the ladder frame is complete is to get it raised up out of the footing by that minimum requirement by code of 75 millimeters or three inches. Now these plastic chairs are designed for that very purpose. This particular one is a 7590. And what that means is there are two potential places for the rebar to sit. You can see if I take a piece of rebar and I sit it in this little slot here, that means that the rebar is now 90 millimeters high in relation to the underside of the chair. And if I rotate it 90 degrees, you can see the slot is much deeper. And that means that our rebar now is 75 millimeters high. And that is the setting that we need. So I'm gonna install these chairs right now get the ladder frame in exactly the right position, then I can go ahead and install all my vertical steels ready to accept the block work. So now the ladder frame is all complete, raised up to the right height on those chairs, it's time to install the vertical bars that are going to go through the center of each of those blocks. Now these also have to have a minimum overlap of 150 millimeters. And to code, uh, this is all that's required that you see here. However, I'm choosing to use this additional piece um, just to give that additional support. This is a retaining wall and I want this to be maximum strength. And on that note, I've decided rather than the 150 millimeter thick concrete, which I had previously mentioned, I've increased the depth to 200 millimeters. I'm just ripping up some plywood here to use as shuttering to hold back the concrete at each of the step locations. And then cutting them slightly over length so I can tap them into position, get them dead level. and then just holding them in position by wire tying them to some offcuts of rebar knocked into the side here. And there's the reinforcement complete. Horizontal bars no more than 400 millimeters apart, vertical bars no more than 400 millimeters apart, all braced and ready for the concrete. And what a mountain of concrete that is I've got to mix. Now I'm going for a ratio of five to one. That's five parts aggregate sand to one part cement.
I'm using a slightly stiffer mix of concrete here just to build myself up here to use as a guide as a level for the concrete in this step. Now I could have just knocked some pins in the ground and floated the concrete to the top of those pins, but this way I avoid any unnecessary protrusions into the concrete foundation. Well, this step really isn't necessary, but it's very satisfying using this edging tool to smooth out the edge of the concrete. You want your concrete just to be breaking off as it hits the blades of the mixer. Too wet and it'll run through the blades, too dry and it'll be really crumbly. Well, now the concrete's had a day or so to harden up, I can just go around and strip off these horizontal braces because of course the concrete is now supporting these verticals. And perhaps even more satisfying, I can, uh, I can remove all the shuttering work, all of the timber, and then sweep out the footings and see what we're left with. And of course these horizontal bars I'm removing will get reused again. Once the block work goes in every other course, there will be a horizontal rebar. And just while the concrete's still relatively soft, it's only a day or so old, it takes about 28 days to get to full strength. Just taking the remainder of that sharp edge away, and any high spots, Nice. All right, clean up this mess, broom it all off, and we're done. Well, it feels really good to have completed the foundations for this retaining wall, and I'm looking forward to being able to start actually building something next. In the next video, part three of this project, I'm going to be getting the block work in place and then thinking about drainage, backfill, and of course that decorative brick skin. So do make sure you subscribe to the channel. It is free of charge to do. That's it for today. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.